is what it looks like pictorially. We outnumber him, 900 to 1. What this means is if Canada becomes a police state, it's not going to be because of what that one police officer has done. It's going to be a result of what those 900 did not do. It's not going to be what this man has done, but what we didn't. It surprised me that no one said anything to stop me. No one, no one said, Carmen, you can't say those things to me. Those things are, are, are sick. Nobody said that. They just accepted what I said. I said, you know, go tell that man to the face he's the scum of the earth, and they'd do it without question. They'd do push-ups without question. They'd sit in the hole. They'd, uh, they'd abuse each other. And here they're supposed to have a little. They're supposed to be together as as a unit in in jail. But here they're they're abusing each other because I requested them to, and no one questioned my authority at all. To, and no one questioned my authority at all. To, and no one questioned my authority at all. And it really shocked me. Why didn't people? When I started to get abused people so much, I started to get so profane that, and still people didn't say anything. I really thought that I was incapable of this kind of behavior. I. I was surprised, you know, no, I was dismayed to find out that I could, uh, I could really be a, uh, mm, <laughs> that I could uh, act in a uh, manner so, so absolutely unaccustomed to anything I would even really dream of doing. And I, <laughs> and while I was doing it, I, uh, I didn't feel any regret, I didn't feel any, uh, uh, guilt. It was only after, afterwards, when I began to reflect on what I had done that this began to, this behavior began to dawn on me, and I realized that this was, uh, uh, this was a part of me I hadn't really noticed before. Perform on, and are given a role. I mean, uh, a job, saying your job is to keep these people in line then you're not certainly not the same person as if you're in street clothes and in a different role. You really become that person once you put on that khaki uniform, you put on the glasses, you put on you take the nightstick and, you know, you, you act the part. And no one questioned my authority at all. And no one questioned my authority at all. You have a very simple remedy available to you. The problem is how most people do not want it. And if you try to take it, they might stop you. You can, can say, say no to them. them. You, you can, can simply, simply say no. If you have a lawful excuse, you can say no. You can establish that lawful excuse with the And no one questioned my authority at all. And no one questioned my authority at all. How did you feel when you said no? Like I had the power to do anything? Yeah. 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 <laughs> did you end up keeping your cell phone? Yes. There you go. Good one. Did they ever try to take it again? See No. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> And cops are, cops are actually funny. I almost became a cop. I came very, very close after the military. I wanted to be a peace officer. I wanted to serve my country. Then I found out not only did they want me to throw people in jail for pot, they wanted me to stop smoking it too. <laughs> You're not special. This one cop, he got so mad at me, a SkyTrain cop. Oh, God, they can go off. He yelled at me, You're not special. I said, how many people have you had to say that to today? You're the first one. I guess that makes me special. <laughs> he, he didn't like that at all, eh? He went off. He started to get mad. He said, what makes you think you're special? God told me. Guess he doesn't talk to you, does he? I think he, it's not that you're not special, he just can't get through. He didn't like this, he thought he'd try to play with me logic-wise. 
And so he, he tried to get me in the corner kind of thing, eh? So you hear voices when no one else is around and you respond to those voices like they're authority. Is that it? I looked at him, I said, nice radio. <laughs> it's a thinking joke. <laughs> they're all just people. They're really trying to do their best. Without them, we'd be flipping hooped, wouldn't we? And uh, my point is this. Never, ever judge a cop until you've walked a mile in his boots. Because that way you're a mile away and you've got his boots. <laughs> I saw all these women, they were taking pictures of themselves in the mirror with their camera. And this made me very sad because I realized not only did they not have anyone to take a picture of them for them, they couldn't figure out the automated timer. <laughs> That was really sad to me. I got a letter from this guy. He was a doctor. He had gone through like nine years of post-secondary education. Got this letter, said, please help me with this. They want all sorts of money. I looked at it, and I, I was shaking.